This chart terrifies me. Now, to understand why, we'll need two things. A marshmallow and a child. Hi, I'm a son. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna do the most famous psychological test ever. The way the test worked is they put a marshmallow in front of a four-year-old. Today we have an eight-year-old. And they said, hey. You can eat it now, but if you wait until I come back, you can have two of them. So today, Dean, what we're gonna do is if you can wait the entirety of the recording of this video, you'll get three marshmallows. How does that sound? Good. All right, let's get you set up and we'll go come right back. All right, so why is this little test so famous? Because it predicted so much. Kids who waited longer scored higher on the SAT, had lower BMIs, were less likely to do drugs, now that makes sense. Enduring short-term pain for long-term gain is a critical life skill. You push through two-a-day practices to earn your letterman jacket. You struggle through graduate school to land that high-paying job. You invest in retirement instead of buying that new Lego set. So yes, apparently all you need is a marshmallow to tell if little Mikey is destined to be the next Michael Jordan or Michael Scott. What have we here? Ooh, economics. Very, very interesting. Except maybe this wasn't actually true. The replication crisis has upended the field of psychology. When people tried famous studies again, they found the results didn't replicate. For instance, you may have heard of power posing and how it boosts confidence. Turns out it doesn't. The whole strand of research on priming where psychologists give people subtle cues that influence their behavior also didn't replicate. And most hilariously, the researchers behind several papers on honesty seem to have lied about their data. In short, there were many debunkings and the marshmallow test was not spared, but it wasn't a total debunking. So the original question was, does patients cause better life outcomes? To fully answer that, we have to account for other factors like a child's home environment. Here's a similar analogy. Let's say I'm trying to predict who's gonna win the next UFC fight. I observe a strong link between muscles and fight performance. Bigger muscles, better fighter. But if I want the pure effect of muscles, I gotta control for hours of training. Training will have its own direct effect on performance through learning techniques and sparring experience. And there'll be an indirect effect by building that muscle. Without accounting for training, I'll overstate muscles' power because they're acting as a proxy for hours in the gym, fighting and sparring. In the marshmallow test, the hidden trainer is the home environment. Once researchers accounted for family variables, the effect of patients on life outcomes dropped by 70%. That doesn't mean patience is irrelevant. It means part of what we call self-control was actually coming from somewhere else. We shouldn't treat patients as an innate feature, something like I call it. It's more like strength. Some people build it easily and others may be less so, but it depends heavily on a deeper factor. So researchers asked, where does patients actually come from? My favorite study from that research is this one right here. It did something that's always fun to do. Lie to children. Here's how the new study worked. They brought the kids in for the marshmallow test. While the kids sat waiting in the lobby, the researchers promised to bring out brand new art supplies. In the reliable condition, the researchers kept their promise and delivered the fresh supplies. In the unreliable condition, they didn't. Then the kids entered the testing room for the marshmallow challenge. The result? If the adult brought you art supplies as promised, you were willing to wait three times as long for your marshmallow. This tells us something crucial. Your ability to delay gratification depends on whether you trust the people around you. If adults consistently keep their word, you'll learn to wait. If they break their promises, why bother? The revised marshmallow test shows patience is power, but patience comes from trust. So let's go back to the chart we started with. This is the economic uncertainty index, and it's higher now than ever. At its core, this is about trust will conditions remain stable? Right now, the answer is no. Are tariffs gonna be high or insanely high? Will trade wars ignite or cool down? Is Canada a rival country or the 51st state? No one knows. Businesses need certainty to plan, and right now they don't have it. Look at these comments from a recent manufacturing report. Customers are pausing on new orders as a result of uncertainty. The uncertainty about tariffs keeps us cautious. Hesitant to commit to long-term volumes due to the market uncertainty. 
and we've already seen the effects of this uncertainty. GDP shrinking, manufacturer orders plunging, my personal life, way too much tariff talk. Businesses are long-term enterprises. Building factories and training workers demands patience. Delayed gratification on a grand scale. But in this environment, even the most disciplined kids can't stay patient. This chart is screaming, eat the marshmallow. The adults cannot be trusted. All right, Dean. You made it. You can eat the marshmallow. Do you want to eat the marshmallow? I won't eat it until you give me more. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's good. It's good? Mm-hmm. All right. Was it worth listening to that long, long econ video? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> If you'd like to look at these topics in more depth, head on over to our Substack, or you can watch more from the Econ Nerds.